Hi guys, it's Sasha and welcome to my YouTube channel, Sasha Gibbs, She's Type Wonderful, a channel aimed at increasing awareness about type 1 diabetes. To do this, I show you some of the things I do on a day-to-day -day basis to manage life with such a chronic illness. I also address topics such as diet, exercise, mental health issues, and so many other topics. So if you are new here, welcome to my channel. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. Now, I have talked about my insulin pump in a couple of the videos that I've done so far, and I've gotten some questions about it. Some of you want to know what an insulin pump is, what it entails. So I decided to do a couple of videos addressing this. The hope is that if you are a type 1 diabetic and you are considering pump therapy, that you will find something useful from this video and I will also talk about some of the pros and cons I've found since starting on um, insulin pump therapy. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I started on insulin pump therapy in a, a, an almost roundabout way. December, I started in December 2018. So this December will make two years since I've been on pump therapy. I had heard, I've been told previously, I've, I've gotten the question previously, Sasha, why don't you try pump therapy? But I've always said no. And um, I've said no because not even knowing what an insulin pump was. So that off the bat i would just say for anyone out there who's a type 1 diabetic never say no to any type of any type of treatment approach without doing your research first and i said no without doing my research i was thinking more about the aesthetics of it i was thinking about having something attached to me what it would look like what people would think and um I didn't know what pump therapy was and, and I said no to it. So I think I was asked on, on multiple occasions about it, not by a practitioner though, by friends and so on who had some knowledge about it and I've always said no. So I came to pump therapy in an almost roundabout way. I have I had an endocrinologist. He was an he was an older gentleman. He was so old school to the point where he did not even have, he had a nurse, but he was so old school that he took your blood pressure himself. He weighed you and things like that. So that is another thing that I got from that. Regarding diabetes management, your, your endocrinologist should be aware or abreast of the technology that is out there regarding um, diabetes management because any little bit helps this disease is extremely difficult to manage so any little bit helps and um i had missed uh, several appointments i not several or should i say several i had had to um reschedule a couple appointments and he said to me you know i think you should find another endocrinologist i'll give you medications up for 30 days that should give you enough time to find another endocrinologist but i don't think you are serious about your diabetes management so i won't be able to to be your endocrinologist anymore so i that's what happened i, I had to find a new endocrinologist and i of course i had to find someone who was in network and I did some research and I selected one. And the first question to me was, um, what type of insulin are you on? And I'm um, looking at my readings because I had to do my labs and so on. And my endocrinologist, she was not happy with the lab values that she was seeing with my A1C and so on. And for those of you who don't know, your, your hemoglobin A1C is the average of your blood sugars for over three months. And I think when I went in, mine was an 11, I think, 11 point something, something. I don't remember, but it was about, it was 11 something. And the recommended range is, is six or below six. I think six, six. <laughs> At least six is the recommended 
A1C. Mine was at 11. And um, she recommended that I should, she, she said I should try um, pump therapy. And at that time, maybe my maturity level was different. I don't know. But I, 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 cons I was open to it then. And she also changed my insulin because at the time, believe it or not, I was on Humulin 7030. Humulin 7030R. And um, my diabetes educator, I met her also that day. And she was saying, she said to me, Sasha, I don't, I didn't know people in the United States were still on this insulin. So for Humulin 7030, it is, it's, it's mixed in the sense that the long and the short acting, they're mixed together in that bottle. So you're not able to control how much long acting insulin you get or how much short acting insulin you get. And because of that, it's not too good of an insulin to be on in terms of the control. You can't. And as you know, if you are a type one diabetic, you know that you always have to adjust adjust how much insulin you get based on the amount of carbohydrates that you're consuming based on your current blood sugar it has to be adjusted and if you are on a 70 30 that's already mixed you are unable to do that so that was the first thing that she did and i started on the insulin pen i started on fiasp and um that's how I started on the pen. I started on Fias, which was a short acting, and I also started on Traceba, which was the long acting insulin. And I was given a sliding scale, you know, what to do, how much to give based on the amount of carbs I was using, and I started on that regimen. And I also started the paperwork for the pump, for, for using an insulin pump now. The insulin pump, it's, it's a very expensive, it's not a cheap device by any means. And um, my educator said to me that, you know, when you, when you speak to them, let them know that, you know, you, can't, you, you would like to try for maybe if they had a financial assistance program or something like that, you'd be willing to do that because you would like to try the device. And that's exactly what I did. I qualified for the program. I was approved and I was able to, I didn't get it scot-free. I had to pay, I had to pay a portion of it, but I paid significantly less than what the insulin pump is actually worth. And I, an insulin pump with everything, it can go over $15,000. And um, I paid significantly less. I paid less than half of that for my pump. And I'm very thankful for that. So I started on, started on the pump. And um, I had to start on the pump, really. Why did I have to start on the pump? I had to start on the pump because of the significant amount of lows that I was having. I had so many lows and lows to the point where I would pass out and sometimes when I passed out I would wake up in my bedroom and I would be <laughs> looking I would wake up and I was wondering who are the strange people that I'm looking at and they were actually paramedics my husband would find me if um, my husband would find me and um, passed out he would have to call the paramedics this happened to me on multiple occasions multiple occasions so many occasions that he even asked me at one point my husband that is he even asked me if um if i was trying to to kill myself which of course i was not i love life i love my life but the way i was managing my diabetes was it wasn't, I wasn't in a good place where my diabetes management was. And um, based on those things, I made the decision that, listen, I have to do better. If I want to be able to, to do something about this disease, if I want to be able to live to see my three children, because I have three children, I have invested so much time, so much energy. I want to, to, to live, to see them achieve their full potential. And in order for me to do that, I have to get my act together when it comes to my diabetes management. So I, um, that, was, that was one of the main reasons why I decided to, to go to try the insulin pump. And um, 
I must say that my endocrinologist has a very good program together. I had the diabetes educator. I had a training. I think I attended three different trainings. The one, the first one was geared towards the actual attachment, learning how to to bolus and, and, and so on. And then there was another one that I did something else. I don't remember what. And then the final training was where I actually went um, on auto mode. Auto mode is where the pump actually mimics the pancreas because actually my pump is my pancreas really, but on the outside of, of my body because it's what I use to administer insulin to myself instead of injecting. So the, the process, the education process of starting on the pump, it was very good for me. I felt, I felt I was prepared. I was taught what to do. I was shown what to do. My diabetes educator, she was very, very there. You could call her. Um, she would have her morning check-ins. And the last training that I did was, which was where I was actually put on auto mode. Um, she actually called and then we did a video. We did a video call as to where I would actually have to do the attachment myself because we would do that in training. So this one, I was actually on my own. I would have to do that attachment and it was done by a, a video call. So I felt supported during the whole transition process to the insulin pump. So I know, and then after that, no, I was on my own. It was, it took some getting used to. Can I tell you, the pump is, it was so annoying. <laughs> Listen, it would beep for everything, but those beeps were, it were, they were a reminder of how much I was not doing a good job at my whole diabetes management. So when I was low, because it's set to tell me if I'm beyond, if I'm below 70 and, um, I would get, it would just beep. At night when you're trying to sleep, you would just hear beep, 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 beep. It was so annoying. Sometimes when I would be out, you would hear a beep. It would start coming from my chest. People would look at me or they, you would see people saying, oh, what is that beep? What is that beeping sound? And of course it was me, it was my pump. So it, it took some getting used to, but, um, after having transitioned and so on it took it took quite some time for me to to get accustomed to it so much so that it is now a part of me to the point where i don't know how i could manage my diabetes without it i have gotten so attached to it it has removed so much of the calculations and and so on it the pump does all of that for me all i need to do is to input the amount of carbs that i'm eating and it will calculate automatically for me how much insulin i need based on that portion that i'm going to eat so it has made my life so much easier almost two years into pump therapy i think i have had enough experience for me to be able to say that pros since starting on pump therapy my whole approach to diabetes management has improved tremendously if you remember me saying earlier in my video that my a1c was an 11 point something within three months i was seven point something 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 within three months just by going on an insulin pump by eight my hemoglobin a1c was reduced to reduced from an 11 to a seven point low seven point low i can't remember my exact value but seven point low and the recommended a1c is to be six or below and i got to a seven point low from an 11 so that was huge for me Another another pro or advantage and another advantage to using the insulin pump is I would say that it is so specific. You don't get that when you use a pen. For example, if I were to eat something, the pump is able to administer to me even 0.1 unit of insulin. 
there is no insulin pen on the market now which is able to be that specific so it's able to give me the specific amount of insulin that i need based on the amount of carbs that i that i'm going to use and overall i'm using less insulin i'm using less insulin because it can be so specific another advantage or um i would say to using the my insulin pump is that when i do exercise i can always adjust my my basal rate so i can get less insulin while i'm exercising i can have a constant reminder on me to know what my blood sugars are i don't have to be worried okay am i going to be low am i going to pass out just because i don't know what my sugars are so it, it provides a certain confidence because at one point i must say i got to the point where i had some anxiety about falling asleep because i felt that I would get low to the point where maybe I wouldn't wake up. And that is a fear that any type 1 diabetic, a lot of type 1 diabetics I've talked to have had that fear about getting low to the point where you go to sleep and you don't wake up because that can happen. And I was afraid that would happen to me at one point because as I said, my lows were, it, they were so so frequent i think the paramedics they probably knew the address to my home they were coming so many times and um and it's i think it it puts on me i i'm more independent because now i think maybe maybe i'll have to get my husband on here to talk about his own experience with me being on the insulin pump i think it has perhaps taken off some of the weight off of his shoulder to the point where he doesn't have to have in his head that okay i wonder if she's okay i wonder if she's going to pass out you know the pump has provided that because if i'm low it alerts if i'm high it alerts or and um it can give it gives me insulin throughout the day just as my pancreas would to the point where when i get to i think my pump right now is set to 150 so it will give me insulin to the point where i get to 150 and then it will stop so that i would say it has made my overall diabetes management so much easier regarding cons on it to be honest i can't think of any disadvantages about being on the pump except for um except for it takes getting used to because now I'm like um, Robocop or something like that. You always have something attached to you. So it's unnatural. So it takes getting used to, to having something attached to you always. And those doorknobs. <laughs> I Let me tell you, I have passed doorknobs so many times in my home only to have the my... Um, my infusion set being ripped out of my body. You forget that you have the pump on the infusion set gets tangled on a doorknob and bloop, right out of your skin, it yanks it out. But so it takes getting used to. And um and it's it's a reminder, it's a it's an ever-present reminder that you are not the same and it might let other people know that you are not the same you have a disability because if someone were to look at me they would not know that i am a type 1 diabetic unless i were to verbalize or say that to them but if i wear a pump especially when i wear it on the outside it's it it may start them wondering oh what is that she's wearing and that's why i chose the picture i chose for my um for my channel i chose that picture and i think i'll try to put it up here somewhere i put that i chose that picture because that was actually the very first time i ever wore my pump in the open when i went when i started i would my pump was always concealed i would have it hooked to my bra i would have it hooked somewhere that no one would ever look at me and know that i was wearing an insulin pump but that picture I like it not only because it's cute and I love cute dresses, I must say. And um, so it's twofold. I didn't want to wear a pump because 
I like dressing up. That's something I've always liked to do. And I was worried about what I would do with a pump, where I would put a pump. And then um, that picture is important to me because it was the first time I did that. I didn't have a care in the world. Whoever knew that I was diabetic, I didn't care. Whoever saw the pump and wondered, I didn't care. So that picture is symbolic to me. It was my, it was, it's, it represents my acceptance of having this disease and it's a, it's a part of my acceptance journey. So it has meaning for me. So outside of um, getting used to the pump, the reminder that you are type 1 diabetic i can't think of any other any other disadvantage of of wearing the insulin pump to be honest because it it overall it has made my diabetes management so much easier as i said i went from an 11 point high to a 7 point low in a matter of of three months because when i started i usually see my endo every three months and when i started and i went back in three months i was already i was already reduced there so those are what i would that that was my experience and overall why i had to switch to pump therapy because if i didn't i think who knows if i would still be here to be honest um, it, it really saved my life, um, pump therapy, and improved my overall diabetes managed. It has um, increased my whole acceptance of having this disease, learning how to manage this disease. So I hope you learned something from this video today. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear from you what your own experience has been with the insulin pump. If you are still on using insulin in the insulin pen or if you're still doing injections and you're curious about what it entails and you want to ask me questions feel free to leave me a comment below or if maybe it's the opposite for you maybe you were on the the pump um, and for some reason it didn't work for you and now you're back using the insulin pen or you're back using the shots um, I'd like to hear your take on that too so um, thank you so much for tuning in and um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on so that as soon as I upload a video, you will be the first to know. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you for the next one. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, stronger.